أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. The Quran is the holy book of Islam. Over a billion Muslims worldwide believe it is the direct word of God as handed down to the Prophet Muhammad in the 7th century. Unlike the Bible, the Quran does not have a traditional narrative structure. Instead, it is made up of 114 chapters organized mostly by length. Some are pages long, others just a few phrases. According to Muslims, God revealed the verses of the Quran to Muhammad over the course of 22 years. Scholars compiled them into written form only after the Prophet's death. Deciphering the Quran's meaning, therefore, has long presented a challenge. It doesn't tell the story of Islam, it doesn't tell the story of the Prophet Muhammad or the early Muslim community. It really doesn't tell any stories at all. The Quran is essentially God's dramatic monologue. For a minority of Muslims in the 21st century, that monologue has been used to justify an extremist political philosophy and a violent strain of religious fundamentalism. Chapter 58, verse 5. Those who resist God and his messenger will be crumbled to dust, as were those before them. This is how many, both Muslim and non-Muslim alike, have come to view the Quran. But while the holy book does contain passages that call for violence, this complex and mysterious scripture also has plenty to say against it. Chapter 5, verse 2. Cooperate with one another on furthering good and virtue, and do not cooperate on furthering sin and aggression. For the vast majority of those who live by the Quran, these messages of peace and compassion are its true guiding principles. For many Muslims, the Quran is the, the source book for life. In other words, it's not just a, a book that tells the Muslim about his or her relationship to the divine creator, but it's also a, a source book of, of moral guidance. How can two worldviews, one of peace and one of violence, coexist within the same book? Those who want to present a picture of Islam as a violent religion will focus on those few verses and say the violent thing. And the ones who want to say that Islam is all sweetness and light and toleration will pick the other half. Neither is, of course, entirely true. These contradictions are in many ways the product of more than 1,400 years of culture and conflict. According to Muslims, in the year 610 A.D., in the town of Mecca on the Arabian Peninsula, Muhammad ibn Abdullah was called to prophecy by God. The revelations Muhammad received would come to be known as the Quran. Many of these revelations envisioned a more just and equal society and were revolutionary in scope. As Muhammad began to preach, these messages quickly captivated the hearts and minds of people who had suffered generations of inequity and oppression. We have to care for the poor, we have to care for the needy, we have to care uh, for the, the, um, the impoverished, those who are uh, disenfranchised and powerless. That is really the main thrust of Islamic social justice. What had been a mix of warring tribes, each with its own set of gods, was soon unified by Muhammad under Islam's banner. Within a few decades, the Quran's message expanded across the entire peninsula. After Muhammad's death in 632, Muslim rulers or caliphs continued to spread the word of the holy book. Chapter 18, verse 29. And report to the people the truth from your Lord. Let him who wills believe in it, and let him who wills reject it. The Quran tells Muslims to, uh, to spread Islam, uh, to spread the message of Islam. 
and, and rulers uh, in particular interpreted uh, the spread of Islam in an imperial fashion. Within 50 years, what had begun as a small community of faith centered in Mecca and Medina had thoroughly absorbed most of the Indian subcontinent. It had swallowed whole most of North Africa and it had pushed the Christian empire deep into Europe and made it very little more than just a regional power. The Quran would inspire a series of empires. One of the first was the Abbasid Empire, centered in Baghdad. Founded in the year 750 AD, the Abbasid Empire marked the beginning of the Golden Age of Islam, a civilization built on the messages contained in the Quran. A pillar of this civilization was a concept repeatedly emphasized throughout the Holy Book, that of ilm, or knowledge. The word ilm or knowledge is used more often in the Quran than any other word except the word for God. God emphasizes knowledge because that is what makes us human beings. It is ilm, say many scholars, that inspired the empire's rulers and helped their civilizations flourish. The Quran is like the seed and it, 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 it exploded, it inspired these dormant human beings in Arabia to become inquisitive about everything and explore everything. The Abbasid Empire achieved unprecedented heights in science, math, and technology. Its scholars collected many ancient Greek texts that may have otherwise been lost and later passed them back to the Europeans. This was an era in which the great works of literature, the great works of philosophy, in particular Aristotle, were preserved not in Greek, but in Arabic. These great works that essentially become the foundation of Western civilization were translated not from Greek to Latin, but from Arabic to Latin. The Quran also served as inspiration in the arenas of art and culture. In Islamic art, for example, we find that there's a tremendous emphasis on calligraphy, that is, on the writing in a beautiful way of the Arabic script, particularly when it's, when it's Quranic verses. You know, the, the Quranic verses as decoration become almost emblematic of Islamic art. Like Christian monks who first copied down the Bible, the calligraphers chosen to transcribe the Quran were held in high esteem and it sometimes took years to create a complete copy of the holy text. As the word of the Quran spread under the Abbasid Empire, millions of people came to live their lives according to its messages. One of those dictates centers around a word that appears just a few times in the Quran's pages and is one of the most controversial and misunderstood, jihad. The basic use of the word jihad is a struggle to be a good Muslim, a struggle to live by the codes of Islam. That is the original meaning of jihad. Jihad translates as struggle. It is marked by two distinct forms, the lesser jihad and the greater. Greater jihad, a phrase first used by Muhammad himself, refers to the internal struggle to improve one's soul and become a better human being in the eyes of God. Greater jihad is given more prominence in Islamic tradition. But lesser jihad has historically garnered more attention and controversy. The law form of jihad is a physical jihad. When you are attacked, your family is attacked, your wife is attacked, your children are attacked, you must stand up and fight back. Chapter 22, verse 39. Permission to take up arms is hereby granted to those who are attacked. They have suffered injustice. God has all the power to give them victory. A good Muslim, if Islam is under siege or the community is under siege, has the right, indeed may have the obligation, to defend his faith or her faith, the community, or oneself. The concept of jihad as battle would soon be cast